No. Okay. Good. <laughs> um, all right. So welcome to the uh, Art of Freedom class today. Um, yeah, it's great. It's every time so new and also in the way that it comes to me to prepare it. So I, I love to share a little bit with you about that because it's like the <clears throat> there's more and more um, uh, activity in a sense like everything is going to be activated by everything that we do like the recognition of the light the meditation the um, suddenly receiving certain parts that you never heard before it's like sinks in and um, start to become a part of you you know it's like that is that is a real uh, say development taking place in the recognition of your truth of course of the truth of who you are well, also it becomes more clear what doesn't belong to it and what is already over or what is gone or what is um, and and that's wonderful to see that uh, happen too so the the thing today is that uh, we have as healing target the child parent idea and um, so what does that mean what is a healing target uh, it's like okay so in all that we experience in our say sojourn or in our yeah journey um, first as a human being later on as an awakening consciousness you see that um, there can be certain parts that you drag with you like almost like in a backpack and it can be it can be pretty heavy you you can be also so used to it that you don't even recognize that uh, it is happening so that it's ha uh, okay so that it's happening um, while you carry it even though it's very heavy you know you you probably recognize that if if you have anything that you carry with you otherwise it would be it would be light and easy and free of that at least free of of the past ideas free of something that doesn't totally come back all the time or at pauses and in moments or maybe in every encounter that you have now and the idea with with the healing target then it is not that we're going to to dive into your past to see what went wrong and uh, um, what influence that had on you see that that would be the traditional way of therapy or um, psychoanalysis tell me about your past and then the, the whole story goes and you bring it to life again and maybe to look at it in a different way but it's it's still the same stuff you know so that's that's not going to make it different in the sense it's it's still say all um, uh, coming from the same box of ideas your human frame of reference and um, so that's that's not the way we're going to do that so well, how can something be a healing target if we don't use the traditional ways of elevating it of uh, say coming clear with your own past and and then it's like um, if if anything from the past would be real then we would have a serious problem it would it, it would be unforgivable because the persons that did something to you the persons that hurt you or the the total failure of an upbringing that you had or who knows what happened all seem to be real occurrences that uh, say influenced you that that broke you that uh, yeah hurt you that did all kinds of things with you so if that if that was a reality then then that could never be resolved then it really was like that it, it happened like that so and um, now you say like okay so it doesn't have any reality well it's like to you it can have reality because it's a memory you carry in your backpack but um, where we come to and especially in this meeting is then actually we don't 
you don't necessarily have to carry that backpack because it is empty but you still carry it around thinking that it's heavy and it's a load and it's yeah whatever it is for you so and then the next thing that comes up too to share is then so do i just um, say negate all the um all the uh, situations and occurrences in my past do i just wish wash over it and and forget about it is that the solution to no that's not the solution either so that does that make it easier i don't know does it make it easier how to deal with it i don't know um so the great thing is that there's a whole different way that is being presented today it's like it's a whole different way of looking at the, the whole uh, the whole package so to speak because um yeah I'm, i will share some sheets with um s very say very basic references one of them is this it's like the way that you look at what has occurred is looked at with your say say limited idea about yourself even though you were there in the situations yourself you know it's like you were there you were the main figure in that story but at the same time your your say your perception of it actually did not make any sense so in other words you cannot evaluate yourself because and we'll see what that is it's like your cues for inferences are wrong your cues for inference is wrong like you 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 miss it you don't see yourself that that uh, entails that you carry with you an, an history uh, that you think really happened to you and I'm not going to take that away from you but it's it's interesting to if you want to be free of it to to give it uh, an possibility of letting it be shaken your ideas about yourself letting these ideas be shaken and um, so t today I invited um, a real master in that who can shake that very well the foundation of your thinking and um, I'm going to share that with you it is it is um, I'll probably listen to 20 minutes or so of the master teacher um, exactly talking about this exactly like the shadows of the past is the title of the of the video of the it's not a video it's an audio but it's great to listen to and what is so great about it is that you're actually taken out of the way that you have looked at yourself you're being shown that the way that you look at yourself um, in fact doesn't make any sense and, and will never make any sense if you look with your perception if you look with your still your references of humanhood so something happens when when you come in touch um, with this light so here we are also with our healing target so the healing target child parent is then also it's like there's something that will be shifting the whole story for yourself too by by you stepping into the adventure of allowing yourself the tiniest change already would be enough it's like the tiniest change in letting go of holding on to your story of what you think your story is allowing that to be shaken a little bit would already be great so it's like have your own adventure here with um, say this light that's called the master teacher which is it seems like a figure like a person but it actually is not so it's a representation of your whole mind it's it's a light that actually say is part of you um, referring to you in a whole different way 
that you might never have heard before. But it's very worth, um, say, letting yourself be exposed to it. Um, just to allow a tiny little change to occur in your idea as a child or as a parent or both. Like what you carry with you, whether whenever that happened, whatever you carry with you as a story, as something that repeats, as a pattern, as a habit, as, an, as a way of, um, um, yeah, in, f in fact, hurting yourself continuously. Like you, you carry the story with you to attack yourself and to separate yourself off and to, yeah, well, I, I don't want to get into it too deeply because it's like we, we will listen to like 20 minutes of Master Teacher and um, this specific talk, The Shadows of the Past, it's it's actually a reading from A Course in Miracles, but he he's commenting on it too in a, in a very different way. So and enjoy this. I'm going to turn it on as an audio and um, we get back to that later. So, OK, so the little program of today, <laughs> I might as well say that now too. The little program that came to me is then after Master Teacher, we have a very different kind of introduction to something that walks, um, say, pushed by the wind. And uh, some of you might be familiar with it. It's like it's a Dutch artist who actually uses the wind to to bring his uh, sculptures to life, you could say. But it's it's entertaining to watch it and just it's completely different. Like he would never have thought that would work and it actually works. So this is the same with you. It's like some things you think like, I'm going to wait for something to happen to me for for the healing to occur. Like I will wait patiently, but I have no idea what I can do in this or who knows what. Like you have no idea what is possible and what can be given you. And uh, you receive that in a certain way. So that's how I do that. So that's the kind of a pause, a break. Then um, after that, we'll see what the next steps will be. Um, that's open still. I, I didn't, didn't fill that in yet. So we'll see how that happens. But that's the program. Um, oh, yeah, by the way. So you might hear some some audience and they're quite spontaneous. You will recognize that, but that's all right. So it's it becomes quieter all along the talk. Wow. It's in its own identity. It sees the same. I'm going to change that for you. It seems it sees the same things you do. It just correlates them in a manner that justifies its autonomy rather than seeing it as all. Yes. yes. That's exactly the teaching. Yes. yes. Puppet, it communicates. It's a dead thing. It's dead. It's, it's in time. It thinks something else is going to happen. You understand? Yeah. It really thinks that something is happening and going to happen later on. And that's, that's crazy. <laughs> if anything is happening at all, everything is happening. And there's nothing outside of you. Got it? So it's everything that's happening to you is all there is. There aren't separate thoughts about you. There's nothing attacking you outside of you. This was what we got to yesterday when we read, didn't it? Yes. Well, doesn't it seem as though something's attacking you? Don't those figures out there yes. seem to be real? Huh? Isn't it necessary that you defend yourself? Sure. Oh, yeah. Now, what can I do for you? <laughs> See, you're looking for an explanation based on the defense of yourself from your own mind. Huh? Obviously, if you defend yourself in any regard, mm -hmm. you're authenticating the attack, aren't you? Yes. 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 Well, come on, then where's the problem? <laughs> your defense. Yes. 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 Doing sermon on the mouth. Your defense is what the problem is. 
period. But you could study it if you want to, and you'll come up with a defense for that. Because you to accept the fundamental premise of the text that you're being attacked by your own thoughts. Yes. Not only that, but your reality is based on attack and defense in your own mind. I, I don't like that. I used to try to teach it in a particular way. All judgment is an attack. Yes. Yes. Okay. And no one attacks without wanting to hurt. Yep. All relationships on earth are based on hurting, not on loving. And if you think they're based, you can't look around and see that. You don't want to hear this. Can you take to the step that you're only hurting yourself? I don't know. You're hurting yourself by denying your brother his reality. Yeah. Okay. Well, yeah, you're all nodding with this. Now go out and teach this then. Because the Cross Association really would like to hear this. He really wants to hear it. The question is, can he find himself not guilty? <laughs> if you find yourself totally not guilty, all right, you'll extend to him the certainty of your mind association of which he is a part. Yes. In fact, he's a total part. Yes. He may not see himself as a total part at that moment if he's in a different place in time, but he will see your mutual reassociation with yourself in the declaration of your wholeness or your love for each other. Yes. He cannot not. Why? He's a product of your mind. Yes. <laughs> You wanted, you wanted to, I saw you deny it at that moment and say, my brother and I are going to share that bullshit. <laughs> he remains a product of your mind. Yes. 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 You come here believing that you're exchanging with me because we've spent 42,000 years exchanging. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm actually all of these other identities, just in various associations in your own mind. Okay. And you have had associations with all of them because nothing is out of your mind. It's all in your mind. But you're the determiner of how you want that to be in your own memory association. Okay. The whole teaching is, if you define me, you kill me. Because you're defining yourself as dying. And you must therefore construct in your own mind associate thoughts that will verify your cancer. You cannot not do it. So you are causing your brother to be sick by your association of yourself. Is this so? Yes. Got it? You named him now. Okay, there's Petula, my daughter, who is, I'm going to protect, and she, I'm going to raise her up, and she's going to... If she doesn't get killed by something, Ray, I'll protect all that. I'll possess that. And she can get sick and die along with me because that's what happens to all of us. That's what we do, isn't it here? Yeah. Is that okay? Are you with me? What do you want? See? You can't have two worlds. I know you want to have two worlds, but you can't. There is no association between pain and sickness and greed and anger and God. None at all. <laughs> Some of you have to learn the trick of laws being wrong. <laughs> You've been teaching a perceptual program association, you can't see that it's crap. That the action itself or the step is what it really is, not the association itself. <laughs> The salvation say would be turning your will over at that moment. I think so. But you've got plenty of verifications that this is not true here, don't you? That there's no God. What do you think at that point? That you made yourself? Or do you create another God outside of yourself that verifies you? You'll do one or the other and both are wrong. You think you know what an idol is, Jesus said? Idol is every thought you have in justification for yourself. Yes. Be it an emotion, be it an apparent exchange, be it anything. You've created these images to verify you each moment in your own memory. Do they succeed in doing it? How could they not? Isn't that funny? And if you don't... If if you don't get the result you want from that memory at that moment, okay, you view it as an attack on you. Isn't that funny? 
And actually, the situation was whole at that moment, and what is missing in it is what you refuse to bring into it. Right. You, this is called the, I did this yesterday, the double cancel out. Yeah. So you refuse to bring everything into it. That association which you constructed in your own mind, projected, and isn't true at all, also refuses. Mm -hmm. Now you get a double, nothing's happening. Mm -hmm. That's where I left you yesterday. Yes. Huh? yes. And nothing is really happening. That the thought I have about my brother is one that I have rejected about myself. Yes. It then comes back to me in other forms and it is not so. But it's provided to give me a definition of myself. How would it not then do the things that it's been provided to do? You demand that it do other things, but it can't. Okay. When Jesus tries to teach us, and of course he says it's, it's a dream with a bigger dream going on. This is the original dream that you had to establish this in the first place. So here we are with what we call the Course in Miracles, which is an insertion. Are we on the air? Okay. Hey, we're on the air. Hello, good evening, good morning. Hi out there. Here we are with the teaching of a, of a whole mind, a master mind your wholeness out of time directing you through a course in miracles or a reassociation of your mind to the certainty that you are as God created you. And it's become an intrinsic part of your mind dedication to awaken from the dream of sickness and death that you find yourself in. We want to verify to you that this metamorphosis of your mind is continuing at an accelerating rate. In the course, you're, the direction is that we are going to save time, okay, within your linear time associations to keep you in your own dream from a continual redirection of your mind to a, a satisfactory conclusion of your apparent dilemma, your search for happiness, which has always, what, resulted in death. Because the images of your perceptual mind are designed to establish the autonomy or separation of your mind from the reality that is all around you. Are we all clear with this? This is the fundamental teachings of A Course in Miracles. That you, remember we read yesterday, you are the dreamer of the dream. There is no one but you. You are the constructor of what you believe to be your own reality. And to you, it is real. Okay. And until you change your mind by whatever device you apply to your own self, you cannot come to know who you are. All right. And in the sense that you retain your own identity within your own dream, you literally can never come to know you who you are. And, you, and Jesus will say in the Course, you can stretch this another thousand years, another hundred thousand years, yet is this dream of death actually over? Now you have a voice that's in your own dream that suddenly is standing in front of you or is speaking to you or has given you a vision or has caused phenomenological associations to correlate in higher uh, identities, brighter associations. You've become more creative now and you're feeling the thrill of self-expression that is transcending your original deep chaotic perceptual association of yourself based on the allowance of your projections to judge you in the limitations of your of your self identity did anybody hear that <laughs> what did you play, play that over what did he say here's what he said since you are only a remembrance of your association the requirement is that you stop bringing your identification of yourself into the situation, which is actually a whole part of you. Since what you bring into the association cannot exceed the identity in, in which you find yourself. 
Okay. So it's necessary in that sense that you forgive or forget your previous identity. That's called a holy instant because at that moment, all of the conflict of your own mind dissolves by your simple determination not to address it in your own conflictual mind. Isn't that so? Yeah. So, and you can remember this occurring because actually you want to love and you do want to communicate. And that every thought that you're having in sickness and pain is actually a total thought of love. Isn't that have to be? It would have to be. Otherwise, how do you know that it's sickness and pain? Do you see? <laughs> it must be somewhere and everywhere just as up, just its opposite. To, to forgive, then, is merely to remember only the loving thoughts you gave in the past and those that were given you. The determination of the perceptual mind to carry the resentment of hate, mm -hmm. of a cultural association of uh, quid pro quo, of give and take, of love and hate, in order to keep its identity is astonishing. Are you aware of that? The identity of a perceptual mind is based on a shared grievance. Is there a question about this? Okay. We must remember the terrible things that were done to us or we will fall apart as a nation. I must remember the awful things that my brother did to me or I will fall apart as a self-association of myself. It's the same thing, isn't it? To remember the loving thoughts you gave in the past and those that were given you. Okay? All the rest must be forgotten. Not forgiven. Forgotten. You couldn't forgive them if they're real. You, some of you guys bring your grievances up with you and then try to practice forgiveness of them. You'll never succeed. What? Forgiveness is a selective remembering based not on your selection. <laughs> Yet it must be that you did select it somewhere in time because you sought for peace and you sought for love and happiness, didn't you? Okay. Now, the shadowy figures that you would make immortal are enemies of reality. <clears throat> Isn't that a lovely sound? Yes. The shadowy figures that you would make immortal are enemies of reality. I'll help you with immortality here. You define immortality as mortality. Okay. What that says is you would make death immortal. You have to do that because you can't destroy yourself. Everybody with me on that? Come on, once more. You can't destroy yourself. So what you do is attempt to make mortality immortal. For the shadowy figures that you would make immortal, because you, you, know, you really don't believe you're ever going to die. Not really. Okay. Your, kind of, your, your whole association of perceptual mind is based on being attacked and being in conflict and never resolving it because you can't construct death. Okay. So that a good definition for perceptual mind is eternal hell. Okay, everybody? This is in the Christian tradition. That you are condemned to eternal hell by your association of hell thoughts. All right? Shadowy figures you would make immortal are enemies of reality. Be willing to forgive the Son of God for what he didn't do. Okay? The shadowy figures, see if you can be with me now, are the witnesses that you bring with you to demonstrate that he did what he did not do. And this is a sharing of the ancient guilt that there actually was a time that we attack reality. And we found ourselves in this place where we had lost communication with God. Okay. Now the practice, and, we are, and you are in association with your own mind, and you have brought these shadowy figures, these people, what you call people, okay, in objective reality, are shadowy figures that you never see clearly, but they are idols enough to justify yourself in association of your own dream, okay? Now, because you bring them, you will hear them. And to pretend that you don't hear them when you bring them is absurd. What you're saying is, I'm willing to hear some of my dream, but other parts of my dream I will reject. 
Wow. And you who keep them by your own selection do not understand how they came into your mind and what their purpose is. Uh-oh. Why are they here? Okay. Are they really here to show you what love is and to show you that God is real and to show you that you never left heaven and to show you that the schism didn't happen? They are here for precisely the opposite reason. Wow. They represent the evil that you think was done to you. You are being attacked by your own thoughts. They bring them with you only that you may return evil for evil, hoping that their witness will enable you to think guiltily of another and not harm yourself. Yet all of these thoughts that you're having are only your own thoughts. Is this so? Yes. So that when you harm that association out there, you're actually harming yourself? Literally? Yes. Yes. That he is actually suffering, that that is you that is suffering his pain? Yes. Not some other time? See how you have set him up as an idol to suffer the pain and keep it off yourself? Yes. Wow, what an amazing idea. They speak so clearly for the separation devised in your mind as thought forms to hold your identity that no one not obsessed with keeping separation could hear them. You have to be absolutely accept your determination to listen to the fact that you could actually get sick and die and that you're not in heaven. And every one of these constructions in your own mind, karma, isn't it, is designed to remind you that this actually occurred and is real. They offer you the reasons why you should enter into unholy, partial alliances to support the no minds or split minds goals of holding on to its identity and getting sick and dying and make your relationships the witness to its power. You give it power over you to direct you, yet it's the power emanating from your own mind. That's an amazing idea. You actually give up the power of your own mind so that something outside of you can tell you what you are in your relationship with yourself. It is these shadowy figures that would make the split mind, the ego, holy in your sight and teach you what you do to keep it safe is really love. What you do to keep yourself safe, attack your brother, defend yourself, have establishments, you are being taught that that is love. That through holding on to your own possessions, okay, that you can love yourself in a limited association with your own mind and reject the other thoughts that are constructs of you. My goodness. Now, the shadowy figures always speak for vengeance, a necessity to get even, a feeling of lack, a feeling of loss, a feeling that someone else has something that I don't have, a feeling that someone has taken something away from me in my own dream that I can get even with, a need to balance, a willingness to share as long as you can keep your half of it. Huh? Do you see what the, human, what the mind does? Wow. The shadowy figures always speak for vengeance and all relationships into which they enter are totally unqualifyingly crazy without exception it's an exchange of nothing mind with nothing mind okay without exception these relationships have as their purpose the exclusion of the truth about the other and of yourself there's no admission in you that you are in a total identity with that association Wow. This is why you see in both what is not there and make of both the slaves of vengeance. That's of yourself and of the projected reality that you have outside of you. And why would ever remind you of your past grievances attracts you 
and seems to go by the name of love. Mm -hmm. So you go out and seek out people in associations that share your hate. Mm -hmm. huh? Isn't that funny? That's what a human relationship is. Then you can gang up on the things you hate together and call it love. Wow. And why whatever reminds you of your past grievance attracts you and seems to go by the name of love, no matter how distorted the associations by which you arrived at the connection may be. It's the same idea as you will make war together on another brother or another association and call it love. And what you define as love is the banding together finally to cause pain to another association. Isn't that astonishing? Okay. When you call it total love, you gather with another association on lover's leap. <laughs> you wrap your arms around each other and jump to your death as a demonstration of your love for each other. <laughs> <laughs> Do not underestimate the craziness of, of the need to associate death with life. And you don't think that you do this, but you do do it. And you love, for example, your offsprings in order that they may die to protect you. I bet you can't hear that. That they are, you construct an offspring as a defense against your own death. Yet you, could you hear me? That's what you do. In other words, if my dad sent me off to war to protect him and die for him that we could share our death associations. Everybody? He specifically designed to protect you from death but not to succeed and then to suffer his subsequent death. There's some lovely sentences uh, in the course about this. Some of you are hearing this for the first time. Okay? But that's what the designation is for, to guarantee that you can get sick and die. Wow. Now, if you suddenly discover a reassociation in your own mind, you no longer want that father or that previous thought form that has held you in the bondage of that association of grievance. But when you attempt to give it up, you will feel the conflict of the previous thought forms that you had constructed to be in diametric opposition to what you now have caught a glimpse of. Mm -hmm. yes. This is what this is going to say about four pages on here, but I wanted to give you a little taste of this. <laughs> what? You've actually designed this to protect you from love, haven't you? Yeah. Yeah. And it will succeed because it's the definition of yourself. <laughs> So no matter how distorted the association by which you arrive at the connection may be, okay, you actually believe that it's okay to share cancer together, to combat it together and call it love. And you might just as well look at it. Who's gonna look at it with me? How much your associations of love are connected to the defense of yourself from reality. Mm -hmm. That's what this says. And finally, why all such relationships become attempts at union through the body, for only bodies can be seen as means for vengeance. So you can kill the other body to protect your own. That bodies are central to all unholy relationships is evident. Your own experience has taught you this. But what you may not recognize are all the reasons that go to make the relationship unholy. And they're all the reasons that you have. For unholiness seeks to reinforce itself as holiness does. It has to. Because mind is a construct of itself in its own relationship with its self-identity. Okay? By gathering to itself what it perceives as like itself. And you cannot not do it. Birds of a feather will flock together. You're, the direction of your mind will bring them all together to verify the sickness and the death. Now, in this unholy relationship, it is not the body of the other with which union is attempted, but the bodies of those who are not there. You really don't want to allow that other body to be whole so that you can identify your wholeness with it. The other body is a construct of your own mind, okay? And it's really not there at all. 
although to the other body it may be there. This is the certainty that there's really no communication going on at all. Okay? For even the body of the other, already a severely limited perception of himself, is not the central focus as it is or in entirety. What can be used for fantasies of vengeance and what can be most readily associated with those on whom vengeance is really sought is actually centered on and separated off as being the only part of value. You literally don't see any holiness in your brother at all if you see any falsity in him at all. He is a total construction of your determination to stay in your own identity. And these are the shadowy figures that you have brought with you. Boy, is that amazing. Okay, ready? Actually, okay, this is what you'll do now to get computers. You're going to take all of these separate thoughts and give them a reality by continuing to separate them in your own mind in order to verify your separate association. Every step taken in the making and the maintaining and the breaking off of the, of the unholy relationship is a move toward further fragmentation and unreality. This is why forgiveness is necessary. This is why at some point you will break off the relationship because it no longer satisfies you, yourself in what you think you are, and you will formulate another relationship that does satisfy you based on the rejection of the previous relationship. You're getting into more crap and more crap here. Who hears me? Who hears that? And the more you fragment it, the more you'll base it on the previous fragmentation. So actually, you're not certain. The way you try to find union is by breaking things up, not by putting them together. And you think you can break it up into enough forms where it will finally forget to come together in your own mind, and in the perceptual mind, you call that learning. Quite literally. Now you need a computer for all the thoughts that you have separated. <laughs> it's just crazy. <laughs> Right, so that was a bit of exposure, so to speak, to Master Teacher. Um, really great to hear it. Uh, maybe you don't understand it, or maybe who knows what your experience is. Um, so there, there can be many things happening when you listen to this. So I'm, I'm not going to go too much into that in what he shares. But one thing that is, um, say, coming to the surface is the idea of fragmentation that you might recognize too. It's like in your life, the actions that you under, undertook to get out of a situation into a new situation caused more chaos and more, say, division. And basically, bringing it back to the human frame of reference, it's like whatever your problem solving is and whatever you do to to make a better life or to look for happiness and peace is basically increasing the chaos and the conflict. So that's why uh, the asking for help or the uh, coming back to um, letting these ideas go instead of doing something with it, but immediately asking for help uh, is becoming the practice. But see, it cannot be uh, happening without the recognition of uh, what you are of that you see that you're doing this if you don't see it that you're doing this uh, then you keep doing it so it's like any part that you use from your human frame of reference to do anything or to to look at anything is really what the judgment is and what what it limits immediately and what it um, say makes it more chaotic uh, that you don't even know what you are relating to anymore. Just like Master Teacher used the example of um, you don't like to live with someone, um, it's like it's boring now, you look for someone else and you like this one much better because of the comparison with the last one, so to speak, thinking like no, now I got it but still based on, on a comparison with someone else. So it's like with who 
then are you actually associating with you? Who are you actually relating to then? And <clears throat> these insights come to you like step by step. It's like you go against, in fact, your total defense system to maintain the identity that you think you have. You, in other words, you translate everything in in the way that you look at yourself. Uh, like you cannot not do that up to the point that you recognize that you're doing it and asking for help completely and completely admitting too that you have no idea who you are. Then it can come to you. You know, these these things are always simultaneous and, and it's very like it's an eye opener to hear that but to hear it in such a way that you want to apply it and actually see it at work so that's that is the offering that is uh, in this uh, message that i share so for me the fact that i share it is more like oh this is this is my uh, precious communication with the one that reminded me of that everything is in me and that say this light that is in me this healing light of uh re so like bringing everything back together and and coming to a wholeness and an experience of wholeness so he is actually the one who showed that to me and um but more by by taking everything away that it isn't like everything was taken away that is not that and then it is like the only desire that is left in you like is is in fact then your desire for peace and happiness admitting immediately that you don't know how to to reach that or to accomplish that or to even experience that so you have no idea what it is now bringing it back to our healing target like the the healing target child parent uh, you see some of it being uh, coming to to the service here in the talk too like if you if you keep your memory of yourself in the same frame as where you think it comes from then you will never be able to get out of it so it's like then you're locked in your definition of yourself locked in the frame because you really think that happening took place in this in this set of thoughts and this idea about myself that i have so if i don't allow myself to have that been shaken and opened up for a release and for healing then nothing has happened and it will never happen here it says like it can take a thousand years or a hundred thousand years you will still have to come to the same spot in fact where you allow that change to occur and the change really is in fact to give up to forget like to give up your um uh, your definition of it all like in fact admitting i was wrong I, I, my whole idea about myself is not what I am. So if I can completely profoundly to the bottom, admit that to myself, then what is can, can literally be shown to me, but only then if I still hang on to one idea, it's like that what was shared in the beginning of the talk too, is like, you want to try to bring two worlds together. Like one world with your memories, and one world with the truth of who you are, and you try to juggle, like we did this the other day. It's like you juggle the two worlds and hope they can work together, and they don't. Like there's no way that you can do that that way. So why am I telling you this? Well, it's like you you ask for healing. You you have a real desire for peace and for happiness. That is profound. Now it is just that in order to get there, you have used something that is in fact an attack upon yourself. It is not a loving yourself. So the request then in this is to, to come to the place where you can actually admit like 
I was wrong about the whole story of myself, how I have seen myself, uh, what happened in my past, what happened to me as, as a kid, what happened to me as an adult, what happened to me, you know, in my work situation, in my relationship situation, like whatever happened was defined by me, but the way that I perceive myself is like literally in a mold of of thoughts that have no reality at all like you cannot see yourself you cannot see yourself that's that's what's in the way so so this whole definition of yourself is not helpful for you to to take any step except for getting deeper into trouble in fact So this is just an attempt and I thought I, I uh, share with you directly from master teacher just sharing the talk that I really love. Uh, like I'm totally happy to share it with you because it has such an incredible um, possibility for healing. And I would like well I can I can definitely take some phrases out of this and use these in my talk here to you. but. To, to have the full experience of, of an audio is very nice too. So that's why I decided to do it this time this way. And um, yeah, so thank you for listening to that and uh, staying with it. And so the next part, like I said, and this is a bit of break time if you want, uh, is to look at a video from a Dutch artist and showing something that actually looks like totally impossible but it's actually happening and this is just as an like artistic um, intermezzo
<laughs> I love it. That's great. I love to see this. So it's uh, pretty amazing. Um, so um, yeah, the next step. I didn't say what's going to happen now. So um, yeah, what will be next? That's so interesting. So maybe I pull you up here and um, if you feel like sharing something, you're welcome to do that or have a question or who knows what might happen. You're welcome to do that. And if that is not the thing that you want to do right now, we'll see what happens. Yes, we, mm. I would like to say it's like a paradox class, this class. Mm -hmm. We can really live complete, completely our life mm -hmm. in certain sort. I, I don't know if you understand me. So you, you say like if we cannot live our life completely. Yeah. There's the paradox. Yeah. Yeah, it seems like it. Yeah, yeah. But I mean, this continuously is like there's the relationships, the world, and there's your divinity, right? Yeah, like this. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. So the the that's great. That's great. So but it's that, it's a it's a question. It's a question. Can we can it come together? That's the question. <laughs> Yeah, great. Yeah, wonderful. <laughs> see, I I had one of the sheets, uh, so you didn't see that before. You see, didn't see that, but I had actually um, one. Um, see here. This is this is really part of that too. Um, yeah, I'll read it to you. The past. Now you are shifting back and forth between the past and the present. Sometimes the past seems real, as if it were the presence. present. Voices from the past are heard and then are doubted. You are like to one who still hallucinates but lacks conviction in what he perceives. See. Yeah, I, I can read it again. Now you're shifting back and forth between the past and the present. Sometimes the past seems real, as if it were the present. Voices from the past are heard and then are doubted. You're like, like to one who still hallucinates, but lacks conviction in what he perceives. So that is in fact exactly what, what you tell me. So that uh, that is in fact, um, say, uh, the beautiful thing is uh, what is being shared now was the idea of the shadows of the past. It's like you really think that the persons you see are representing others, you know, and, and that you live in a world where there are others and uh, that things are going to happen later on. And And so that is all not taking place. So you could say like we're coming closer to the end of time, you could, and the end of time is basically coming into the present moment, and and staying right there, not not moving from it. But but because we carry still memories of the past that seem to be very much alive in in persons, in relationships, in uh, parent child, um, yeah, partner relationship or whatever, or your work or your memories about yourself your definition of yourself. It's like, as long as you uh, say, hold on to your definition of yourself, as you see yourself, you're, st you're still in the past effect and you're, you're living a life of someone who isn't really there, who's already gone. Because what, what the actual occurrence is, is that you are whole and perfect as you were created, like I am my father one. That is a realization right now, completely given to you. Like that is the reality of you. The rest has not occurred, it's gone. But you live 
still live with ideas about a self-definition in which you think that you live in this uh, in this construct you could say in this in this thing that you made that you call yourself and hold it together defend it use everything for it to keep it in place in fact uh, even though you you're you know there's something else and uh, you have come in touch with it it is also in your consciousness but um, say the other part is still there too like an uh, what I called in the beginning a backpack of ideas that you carry around still with an idea of that's a heavy load to take with you well actually there's nothing in the bag but you didn't see it that way yet because of the way that you defined yourself so there's there's the only way out then is in fact to be present in this moment without any definition of yourself and and that is for the figure that asks for it impossible <laughs> that is a paradox <laughs> So the one that is looking for the solution isn't real. <laughs> so I hope that increased your confusion. <laughs> See, it doesn't make a lot of sense to, to explain it. So that's why we practice light and love and meditation Coming, becoming present but actually if you would become present you would be out there say in light completely in total gratitude experiencing fulfillment from top to toe and way beyond it's like so in fact then what you could say like you're holding yourself together in a total denial continuously you're happy with a glimpse of light but not more than that like oh don't don't blow me away with light don't completely penetrate me with light don't do that i still have myself take it easy on me you know that kind of thing so it's like a cat scratching over like no no while you're being pulled by by that what is so magnetic to you you want it you want it like you totally want it deep inside of you you want it so badly you want to let everything go to just come into that experience but the superficial you says no no and comes with a dramatic um, story about why that could not happen right now and you keep postponing it like you know, some other time i will be ready for it some other time not now it's like here's god giving you everything and you say like well wait a minute um i gotta do something wait wait, wait stay right there you know this this is the story of uh, uh even of an awakening mind getting more and more attracted to the light and to experiencing peace Yeah, Angel. I know this is stupid, but <laughs> so what percentage of us are, are because, really... Because, because you are stupid or something? Or what? What is stupid? No, no. Uh, the question. Um, <laughs> You're all imperfect. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so what percentage of us is real? Is really us? Who's asking? So who's asking? <laughs> you know, I know it's not a percentage, but you know what I mean. How much of us? Yeah, who, who's asking? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> not the Probably one who's the real. We could not ask this question. So it's like you, you can, yeah, the one that is asking this question isn't real. So why would I give an answer? Like which percentage of you is real? None of it. None of it. Probably a good thing. None of none of the one that questions is real. Like the same as none of the one that is hurt is has anything to do with your true self. Yeah, none of it. 
and I can feel a bit lonely, but uh, like a lonely suffering. Like whatever suffers is not a part of me. Like no, it's only related to the definition of yourself. So you think like a part of me is real. Uh, at least maybe forty percent of me is real, right? Or fifty, maybe sixty, or maybe I got over the fifty percent. You know? Like most of me is real. <laughs> <laughs> no, you're either totally real or you're nothing. So it's like to say it out blunt. It's like you're either totally real or you're nothing. And and that's not a uh, judgment. It's an experience. So if you get that and you experience the wholeness of you, you will never have to ask that again. Yeah. But you join immediately in in what is. So it's like that is that is yeah, that is circling around in our meetings too. It's like the moment that you feel really grateful and love loved by everyone, you see suddenly the beauty of the ones that we meet that are here suddenly you feel something that is so like you catch uh, the glimpse a glimpse of light you want more of it you know you want more of it and and you recognize that as also as part of you and you can accept that without feeling um, uh, separated off of it finally you allow yourself to feel that about yourself too you know so that's where this is about that's why we come together because it cannot it can happen suddenly that you shift into it, sure, but but this is a beautiful exercise to to allow more and more of the love that you are to be accepted by you, like taking it back. So now instead of say that you see that um, Master Teacher used to the idea of self-expression, like you become more creative and sensitive and self-expressive, like the first moment that you express yourself uh, with a creative expression, something like in a little assignment uh, some time ago. The first time that you did that here in the group was totally different than how you do it now. It's like you have allowed yourself to express yourself like that turned around and suddenly you can be yourself. You feel the freedom of, of the self-expression like it is expressing itself through you. That was the whole idea, you know, that's the whole idea. And you can identify with that completely without hurting anyone. This is where where true love um, is, you know. You get what I'm saying. <laughs> <laughs> but you're such a beautiful example of that angel. Come on, you're such a beautiful example of that. So we're always becoming. No, no. Yeah, you could say that too. Yeah, you could say that too. It's like you're in a continuous creative uh, self-expression. Absolutely. Absolutely. It is, uh, say, it with a capital I is expressing itself through you as much as you allow that to occur. It can be total. And it will still be growing. It will extend forever. It will expand forever. That's why it's so incredibly exciting that you rather not think about it because you might disappear into it. That's why I say these things. <laughs> Can you feel how hot that is? <laughs> <laughs> yeah so that's great yeah so that's why it can you... sound like a yeah go ahead uh, it, it can see it sounds like a paradox to say none of me is real um and the fullness of myself but you, you can t you can you can talk about that maybe because it's it sounds like a paradox but it's it's really just the wording no, it's not just a wording. It's, it's the 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 I say the reference that you use. So if you see yeah. your self-definition as your identity, then then yeah, that's 
that's not what you are. So it's like that none of that is real. But if you let, uh, say, don't need it, and definition of yourself but come to know who you are it comes from a whole different place and you extend it it extends through you see because you cannot say you cannot extend from yourself as you've defined yourself that will always be limiting but if you recognize that you're an effect of, say of of god which is in you uh, you're an effect of it you don't have to make yourself that is already given but you can experience it and it can extend through you as much as you want like I said it's like you can open it up completely and and say so in in your self-definition of yourself you see that that's a danger for the existence of the you that you know but if you feel the flow of the divine through you in such a way that you're completely be taken by it there would not be one instant that you would think that you would missing something you would be missing something you know so this is this is like a really um, beautiful in fact really interesting that we can actually look at it so we can look at it by defending ourselves a little bit otherwise you if you really hear it you disappear into it like it's all really an experience, nothing else. That's all. So it's like in one of the lessons of A Course in Miracles, it says like, above all else, I want peace. You know, I want to experience peace. If that is really true, then you would immediately go into that experience. You didn't have to say like, oh yeah, now I know what you mean. It's like, no, you don't know what I mean. Otherwise you would disappear into it. Like everything we use with, um, say, vocabulary in that sense is a denial of what it actually is. Oh, I love you so much. No, you hate me. That's why you say that you love me so much. If you love me so much, you would disappear with me into light. That's what love is. That's all. You know, it's like you have no idea how in how much denial you are as a human being, as an, as an awakening mind recognizing its its humanity as a human frame of uh, nothingness <laughs> did i did i say that <laughs> yeah no so you're you're familiar with that it's not a shock any longer so yeah this is great so thank you for the questions it was actually nice that we did this and yeah so it's not really discussion, more like, yeah, sharing the joy of the recognition. You know, it's like there's so much joy and, and light in there. Yeah, great. So wonderful. So I have one still a song that i love to play it's a bit of an uh, there are two songs actually one is um, the choir version and the other one is a more like up tempo version but i love to share them with you just as an uh, say possibility to to relax so it's memorial day in america right is that something what is it what do you do when you memorize on this day <laughs> Uh, they put up a lot of flags and it's all patriotic People barbecue. and yeah you barbecue <laughs> but we don't have barbecue <laughs> that's what so most of day off you go, it's usually you go, a three-day weekend you go to the cemeteries yeah yeah yeah. It's oh, a, yeah okay okay it's an excuse for people to get together and have a reason to party yeah yeah, yeah. see your family so and like you know, a, a three-day weekend yeah just like a holiday Pent pentecost like I, I bet that uh, say 99.9% .9 doesn't know what this is all about Pentecost. Yeah. They have a weekend off and they go do all kinds of things. So <laughs> can you, can you tell us what Pentecost is? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Another time. I, believe. <laughs> I, I actually uh, was sharing it yesterday. So, and actually uh, we meditated directly with a meditation from Joel mm -hmm. Pentecost. 
So I will re refer to that. Like I, I put up the video tomorrow probably, and then and then we can listen. Um, but to to bring it to you short, like the uh, the short version is is this. It's like okay, so Jesus ascended, right? And on Ascension Day, he ascended, and then he said, "I'll send you a Comforter." And that's in fact, say at a certain point, if you look at it historically, it was like suddenly people came together and something was almost like the wind uh, was coming into like a church or something, a meeting place. And they felt as if there was fire on their hats. Suddenly they could uh, understand each other uh, beyond the language. And, and this is like a really beautiful metaphor, of course, for communication in light as we as we meet in this meeting, like we we n recognize the lights. So no matter what words are being spoken, whether you speak French or whether you speak English or, or Dutch or whatever, it, it wouldn't actually matter because it's like now you recognize the light and that is communicating so that it is not an historic event. It is it is literally what you uh, can do in the recognition of your ascendant mind. Like you are in, in total communication, uh, in the, yeah, in communication in light, not in words or your understanding. But you get what I'm saying, hopefully. Thank you. Yes, absolutely. Okay, so uh, there are two songs. They're actually the same songs, but they're different versions. One is the choir. Start with that. <laughs> 